Welcome to a one versus one between Isirid and Kash Chatria. How would you say that? I am here with Manu and he's co-casting with me. Hello. How would you say Chatria? I think your pronunciation is okay. I think it's easy to t just say Chat or Chatria. I don't know. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. So yeah, Chatria requests this game, um, and it's a kind of long, long game. So I'm gonna start from here, uh, and you can see here that Chatria in blue has started with uh, Clokis and a uh, Guardian Commander, while uh, Isirid has started with uh, a Shield Bot Factory and a Recon Commander. And they both start with an economic start, making one come first and then the raider. Uh, what do you think about this matchup uh, on this map? I think, like, especially on such a big map like Ortego, you definitely need to start with a constructor. And there are actually quite a lot of viable factories on this map. On such a big si uh, size, you can even play gunships, like going for low cost raiding and stopping incoming raids because you're just faster than the enemy. And there's enough flat terrain for hovers, rovers, and even tanks to walk properly. Yeah. And here comes the first engagement. There's a bandit running into two glaives. Let's see if they're paying attention. Yeah, Shatria is paying attention. Like two glaives have no problem running down a bandit, and he do and Shatria even does it without losses. So that's nice. Yeah, the main uh, advantage the glaives have is that they have a high auto repair, and now the glaive didn't take any damage at all. Yeah, yeah. That's so. That's the thing. Like if you just take careful, make sure that both of the glaives enter the range of the bandit at the same time. You can even kill it without any losses if you're careful with your micro. But it gets extremely tricky when the numbers are getting higher. Yeah. Because at some point your units can't get uh, close enough before they are dying. So they're losing a lot of DPS before they get in contact with the bandits. Yeah. And there's the first loss for Shatria. He Shatria loses a glaive up there to the commander, but not no big deal. And there's two glaives coming in here, trying to harass. I don't think they're gonna do much. There are several like bandits here, so yeah. But he's gonna, but Chatria is gonna try. I mean, the main focus here is to just annoy the shield bot player, maybe. Yeah, getting almost max, getting max or oh, six in health. Close. Yeah. Just keeping the enemy away. Like Israel oh. knows that. Nice pickup. Yeah. He knows that his bandits are generally stronger than the glaives, and that's why he is trying to get the fight. Yeah. And especially since the bandits are slower, they yeah. have to protect the base and can't ra counter raid fast yeah. enough. But Chatria just outmaneuvers him like hell. Yeah, this is good play. Al by always picking off single glaives, like even if the enemy has five or eight bandits, as long as you cluster your units, especially with raiders, and take them from an angle where only one or two can attack, you will win. Yeah. Like even now, another bandit just did go down. Yeah. That's definitely gonna, gonna slow down uh, easier it quite a bit. Yeah. Although uh, Ch Chatria hasn't really expanded to yeah, all the mixes I, yet. I just noticed too, like, if he just had his one constructor on building all those maxes, like he had one sending to the top left, but this one should, should have just gone for all those maxes in the base and then go up there. Yeah. He lost quite a lot of metal. Yeah, by like, going to this area, yeah, that's true. Is it right? Can't really raid right now. Yeah. Like, he well, still well, has to... He could have sent away a single, like, uh, bandit before. Like, you yeah. can't keep track of that. Like, Shatria. But yeah, I, I agree. You should take the closest maxes first, generally, almost always. 
And look at how many bandits are tied up by just three glaives. So that's like how many bandits? That's ten bandits just trying to like chasing uh, three band three glaives. Yeah, this is letting like Isirid is putting up no counter pressure. Uh, so yeah. So this, yeah. I mean, both players are p uh, playing this really good. I mean, Kshatriya did get quite a good early raid in the early game, but in the moment when Kshatriya doesn't pay attention and the bandits get to engage the glaives properly, then all of those glaives are gone and suddenly the pressure gets high on Kshatriya instead. Yeah, true. So it's definitely uh, more attention focused from Chatria instead of Isaride. Yeah, um, and Chatria is already switching to uh, Reavers and Knights and pushing out. Uh, just pure Reavers and Knights here. Oh, a nice pick up there by some three glaives. I mean, they wouldn't be able to do much there anyway, I think. No, if it was really worth like three clays for one constructor. It depends on how you look at it. Like they're not likely to do anything else in this situation. Although just keeping the bandits at home is also worth it. So I mean, twenty-three bandits tied up by three claves is good enough for me. Yeah, true. And now he's also gonna get some mixes and storage just running past. Yeah, that's weird. Like yeah, he said. That's the, that's the real problem of bandits and being slow. Yeah, like easier you should have just uh, uh, had two groups of bandits, so you could say yeah. So yeah, that's a worth raid. Like that's gonna slow. Even if he loses all the glaze now, just the time it takes to rebuild these mechs is gonna like cost cost uh, Isaru that metal. So yeah. Yeah. And all those bandits, they could have been out raiding the uh, Isaru's. I mean, uh, Chatrias expansion, in, but now he's gonna face all these reavers that's already on his doorstep. He's gonna be like, yeah, he's, he can't just, they're a threat to him now. So basically the risk with going for a switch early like this with reavers and knights is that the enemy could just run past them with uh, bandits. But uh, now the enemy is all, now they're already in uh, Isaric's base basically, so he's gonna have to deal with them somehow. But he's still gonna send off his bandits, it looks like, to raid. Yeah, he's definitely going for a counter raid, which is indeed the right decision. Yeah. But I would ex Yeah, he's already starting to build rogues. Like, yeah. Reavers can't really push into rogues. Yeah, and true. Knights, too. There is no real attack position in the south right now. Yeah. So, Patria should probably. Might even yeah look for the top and try to clear the expansion a little bit more to the front and even maybe consolidate and attack Israel's commander. Yeah. So yeah, Shatri has no units with like only a few turrets to face off these bandits. That's not a good decision. I mean, one of the reasons why I don't go reverse this early is. Like, you see it right now, you get outmaneuvered by the bandits and now his entire base is threatened. Yeah, true. But but the bandits, but the reavers and one knight is also going in against, uh, basically almost uncontested, into his base. The rogues were in the wrong position, so now they're both gonna damage each other a lot. Yeah. But, yeah, uh, is right, just didn't pay attention and sends his bandits in early. If the outlaw did slow down the reavers, then they could have done a lot more damage. Yeah. Feels like both are going in a little bit too hard. Mm, I mean... In Shatria's position, I kind of agree with it because he was gonna get countered by the rogues. Although we could have like retreated back on the map towards the commander, that's a potential thing he could have done. So yeah. 
Shadria has even made a site to raid and uh, damage these uh, expanding cons. That's pretty nice. Really annoying. Yeah. It's kinda hard to deal with, especially on such a big map. Yeah. But now that both players did kill the back economy, it's mostly about who re re rebuilds faster than the other. Yeah. And, and those rogues are going to pressure Shatria quite a lot now. Yeah, the commander probably needs to run for it. I still, yeah, and um, yeah, <laughs> like dodging rogues forever is gonna be quite annoying if you do that. And he's taking too much damage, say, <laughs> but this, yeah, the side couldn't really help. I mean, you have to dodge. They, oh, he's not dodging at all. Okay, that's the commander gone. But on the other hand, uh, these, uh, these uh, knights and reavers are pushing these commanders, so it looks like they're gonna trade commanders basically. Like this knight yeah. is gonna catch this uh, commander now and stun it. Yeah, it's dead. Yeah, that's the end of that commander. So yeah, they basically trade the commanders in this situation. It's kind of funny how they have different units, but they still mirror the things they do. They they go hard into the enemy base at the same time and then they kill their and the enemy commanders at the same time. So at this position, it looks like they're pretty even. Like uh, this area is, is a bit f further behind um, uh, than in Chatria, and Chatria has a bigger army out on the field. Yeah, but his main army is countered by the army of Viseroid already. Yeah. Like, I don't really understand why Chatria is trying to push top right now when he sees that there are only rogues. Yeah, true. Yeah, and there's coming some outlaws to help the rogues. You see the incoming glaives. But if he had, if he had, if he said had a little more better protecting, he would have had uh, one or two outlaws there already to protect against the glaives. Now he's gonna be forced to push back. Uh, push back. But yeah, you can see here that uh, now the Shatra is trying to chase down banners with glaives. He's gonna do really badly. Like yeah, that's too few glaives, and the banners are just gonna have them. So yeah, let's see how the Zeus and Knight army does against this army. Is he already sending his outlaws forward a bit too early that he shouldn't do that? Like he should reserve them from when the glaives come, but he still has enough outlaws to deal with the glaives, I'd say. And yeah. Yeah. While he didn't lose all glaives, it was enough to yeah, force them back and now all of his army died to the rogues. Yeah. Like I said before, there was no real opportunity to pressure in the top to begin with. Yeah. Still getting if he gets a few caretakers, that could be nice for, for him as well. Yeah, he's gonna get one. So yeah, that's that's nice for you is to for Kshatriya to like yeah get his caretakers. Funnily enough it doesn't even do that much because he only has 25 metal per second as income. True. But Chatre is they basically even on metal income right now. So yeah, that's pretty interesting. Like his arrow did some pretty good raiding, he killed like three mixes here, and like yeah, killed uh, some solars and stuff with his bandits, so yeah. So yeah, doing this counter raiding is keeping Isaiah in this game because he looks a bit behind right now. I think, in position on the map. Uh, how far is he behind? He, oh, he's actually ahead in value now. That's interesting. But I guess most of his value tied down in his defenses. That's not really doing much for him right now. He I think it's really hard for Cloaky to fight against Bandit Rogue. Like, yeah, it can be pretty hard. Yeah. What do you usually try to do as cloak against shield bots? 
Uh, I usually try to depend a lot on glaives and outmaneuver the bandits. And uh, like, if I can get the rogues from several angles and go for it, then you can kill the rogues, kind of. Um, so I'm, I depend on glaives a lot, really. Um, like, I only make ronins if the enemy has like a shield ball to ta to drain them. Uh, otherwise, I stick to uh, like yeah, glaives basically. And I'm uh, yeah. Like knights are, I mean, decent, I guess, if you want to push up a push up a season. But on this map, you can rely on glaives for a long time, and you might even want to switch to like gunships as well to like get even more power to kill the bandits. Yeah, like as long as bandits are pressuring you, you can't really do anything as cloak is. Yeah. It was a bit sloppy of Isiri to lose his Felon there. Yeah, definitely. Like, he just needs to slowly kill those knights with his rogues. Yeah. Like, even now he's idling his rogues a little bit. Yeah. And he's gonna lose his uh, bandits one by one, basically. Like, like, knights are pretty good in this situation. Like, you want... Running in with bandits one by one like this, yeah, you're gonna lose all yeah. the bandits. That was quite bad. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And I actually don't really understand why Israel is going for Fallon at this point. What does he want to kill with the Fallon? Uh, maybe he wants to feel more safe against the bandits. I don't know. I mean, the glaives. Uh, maybe. Like, look, this knight is still killing the turrets. He might be able to clear out his mexes. Yeah. Yeah, another thing... Yeah, another thing I, you can do on a map like this, the problem with uh, bandits against, like, it's hard to skirmish against... Uh, uh, skirmish against them uh, with, like, blaze. Like, the bandits have the... Oh, nice kill on the outlaw there. Is there is being a bit sloppy with his units, like he's losing bandits going for outlaws going forward and he's losing he's still losing his bandits one by one to this lone knight. It's kinda of funny. Yeah, the felon can also like kill imps, for example. But I mean bandits can also do that. So Yeah. Yeah, he f but yeah, uh, Isidore properly, really finally got that no. felon. Sorry, what? Yeah. Properly micro bandits actually oh, count that's the most of the factory. But that imp is good. Yeah, that imp was really good. <laughs> okay. Like, even with such a good imp, it takes quite a lot of time to actually kill all the units. Yeah. Because he didn't have enough glaives nearby. Yeah. Yeah, like rogues, they have pretty good HP for their their cost, basically. Yeah, that's a thing you have. You want to consider when you're shield bots. You want to have radars up so you can like. It's it's important to see like lone units running up and like uh, disappearing. You want to prevent that from happening. I think at this point I would definitely switch my factory as the cloak bot player. Okay. Like you, you're going into a stalemate against rogues and bandits, which is kind of hard to push, and you have metal advantage and going nearly to 50 metal per sec. Yeah. Like yeah here, here comes bandits. another rain by Shatrail. It's pretty nice. Yeah. yeah. Going to the sides, going around the map. Like, Otago has quite pathable mountains for bots. Yeah. But I think at this point you either want, like, Phoenix or Thunderbirds to get those shield bots in mid. And that snitch is taking all of those glaives. Ouch. Oh, that was nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, you can't really be prepared for a cloak snatch like that. If mm. you spare your units, then like you don't know it is there. So if you spread your units, you are already moving into range of defense. Uh, it's a psychological thing. Like you can oh another nice snitch there. Like you can spread out your units and minimize your losses, or even send a few a uh, line. Like you send a few units on a line in front of the other units. It takes a bit of mental effort, and you lose a little bit of time, like spreading out and having yeah. But I mean, it's kind of a mind game, really. Yeah. Same with cloaks. Yeah. Like I would like to see those knights cloaked right now. Yeah. If knights are cloaked and get in range of the rogues, knights are actually winning. Yeah, true. Like yeah, that's a thing as well. You can always do like you can cloak the knights. So what I like to do on the target mostly is to to depend mostly on glaives, and then I against shield walls I would switch into uh, like uh, uh, what would you call them um, banshees, gunships. Uh, oh. The locusts. Yeah, the locusts, yeah. And because the locusts, they can, uh, what do you call them? The problem is you don't want to keep skirmishing against uh, bandits because then they win. But if you have locusts, they can like, they have enough range to to force the bandits to take the engagement and then your glaives can run on top of them. Okay. And that's a really mobile strategy. I mean, the main advantage of the locust is just that you can run around the entire map and negate the enemy from raiding you at all. Yeah. But I mean, against shield walls, you can like you can stay mobile. Like if you don't want to go for like cloak knights or something like that, which you almost pretty much need to do against uh, rogue. Uh, like if you're facing rogues, you pretty much need to do that as well. Yeah, and this is really large engagement. Uh, yeah, like uh, Chatre is losing his uh, knights in the north, and the glaives come in in the middle of the map. And they face, they, like, they manage to rush in against outlaws. Like, even against glaives, outlaws that are not protected by thugs don't do that well. Yeah, but the moment when there are two outlaws or just Single fuck, you can't really engage anymore. Yeah, true. Yeah, there's a lot, like a lot going on. There's also knights in the north pushing forward. Um, they're getting a few mixes. And <laughs> Chatu is gonna run through with a bit of blaze. Yeah, again. it's pretty nice. I. If oh no! Can, you in in the middle, uh, Isaridi is just running his uh, rogue straight forward into the knights. That's bad. He you forgot should to put pretty him on much fight. always put them on fight move. There's yeah barely any reason to use move commands. Yeah, true. I'm actually quite surprised that both players at this point didn't even consider building a geo. Yeah, true. It's a pretty good uh, thing on this map to build a geo up in the mountains. Like both sides have one really safe, one kind of safe, and another geo on the top or bottom part of the map. Yeah, true. It's yeah, it's a economic condition. Like yeah, you can get a lot of uh, uh, overdrive from that. Katria seems to get quite a lot of knights up, which are good in general against shield forts. Yeah. It, it's mostly that Isarite is kind of sloppy with his rogues, and especially now, yeah, sh should have sent his rogues from the top a little bit earlier. Yeah. And uh, one thing, Just... one thing is that uh, Isarite has his uh, rogues on. Uh hold position. Yeah, and he's already moving them into the knights again. Yeah. He really should start using fight command, especially against those knights. Yeah. And now we're gonna get catch against the hill there. Gonna lose, like, how many? I guess one. I think this is a bad engagement for the knights. 
Yeah, actually, they're getting bunched up and killed by the ropes. Like, they are clustered, they are getting slowed, and they can't really push through. Yeah. And now that they are slowed, they can't retreat anymore. Yeah. Hmm. Did you pause the game? Hmm. Apparently I did. Uh, yes. It's kind of funny, like, um, Iserid is also having like four thugs that were running around the map and killing mixes as well. That's pretty nice. So, yeah. I actually... There was an outlaw with it too, but it died somewhere in the process. Yeah. Like, raiding with thugs, with thug, thug law, like two thugs and one outlaw, it's a pretty good raiding sortie. It's slow, but it's like hard to get. Like if you yeah. use, if you use skirmishers, they typically can't hit it because their projectiles aren't fast enough. They're trying to chase them, and if and if you send in raiders, they're gonna, gonna get killed and slow by the outlaw, and and while the outlaw is protected by the thug, and you can easily run down like a few lotus turrets or pickets. That's like easy pickings. But now they are going to die against the glaze because the outlaw did go down. Yeah, true. Like outlaw is definitely necessary to. Push through. Yeah. Thugs on their own can't do much really. I find it really funny that Chatria did get two radars inside Iserite's base basically on this top mountain. <laughs> yeah. It feels like Iserite is slowly losing on economy, but Chatria just... I don't know. He just keeps building knights against rogues and doesn't work out. Yeah, if you check the values, that's pretty much uh, what's happening. Like, uh, Chatrias have like uh, almost 8,000 more metal produced, uh, while... Uh, yeah, uh, Isir is actually starting to get ahead in the killing right now. Because he's yeah, he's killing all the saves, all the knights. I mean just as I said before, you should definitely fax which like I would probably keep building glaives and just go for Thunderbird or two and try to get those outlaws and phalons and kill all of those clustered units. Like, it's one of the main problems of the Shieldbot Factory that they have to kinda cluster their units to be effective. Like, knights are dying again and again. Yeah. I don't know what Chatria is trying to achieve here. Yeah. Yeah, like, he isn't even cloaking the the knights right now yeah if they were cloaked they would probably win yeah now is the right is going in with bandits again yeah I'm taking coming. free maxes and yeah he, if he sees glaives he can just retreat and beat them yeah yeah, that's where Bandits with Fight Command just cleans up waves like that. Chadbeer lost basically all of his knights by now. Yeah. I think Israelite is probably going to start pushing really soon. Yeah. Like, yeah, after this engagement, this was a really bad engagement. Uh, Isir is actually held in value now. I mean, the main problem that Kshatriya has at this point is just those mass rogues against knights, and it doesn't work out. Yeah. He either has to cloak his knights or switch factory. Yeah. 
kind of funny because uh, Iseri is he's building like stardust everywhere because he's getting so annoyed by these the glaives. But Chatter was already killing quite a lot of economy with his glaive, so yeah, it's reasonable. <laughs> yeah, true. Although and personally, I would just stick on glaives and have more groups of glaives to like follow up them, to follow them and stalk them. Yeah, you can even if it's the Stardust, if you spread your units far enough, you can overwhelm it. Yeah, you might not be able to make cost with it, but you will be able to break through and attack the economy again. Yeah. And now I don't get why Iserid is so defensive right now. Like he crushed all opposition, all the knights. There's nothing stopping him from just advancing across the map. Like look at the position that Shatra is building a a gunship plant, and he's gonna make a drop here. It's like a oh, weird what? position to make them. I mean, he has 10 transport bots, he does go for locals instead, no? Well, I mean, transporting 10 units, like 10 knights or 10 reavers into an enemy base, that's probably quite enough. Yeah, but he should do it right now. Like, yeah. Why is he waiting and going for more locals if he has his 10 transports now? Yeah. Also, I don't get why Isaerud is holding back all these rogues, like... I mean, yeah. I mean, he, he, especially in the south, he has his shield ball, Fox, an outlaw, and tons of rogues. He could just push through right now. Yeah. I guess it's kind of a psychological thing, like you have been struggling to hold this area and you're finally kind of breathing out. You're like, yeah, you don't you feel afraid to move ahead when actually I mean, On the other hand, you are still playing against Loki's, which could cloak the units. Yeah, but, but I think you can just send for you can send forward some outlaws, or you can send forward some uh, some bandits, or even if you want to be really cheap, you can send forward dirt bags. Like, yeah, like dirt bags is also a unit you can sacrifice. Yeah, but now is right is going for the south. Yeah, he but could also have gone for the north, but he decided to retreat. I don't get it why, because his thugs were still had a lot of health still. And here yeah, comes the drop. Patrick. It's gonna have like ten, uh, ten knights. And he has to pay real. He really has to pay attention where he drops them. Yeah, it was. Fine, I think. Yeah. Actually, like keeping them together, going for Stardust first because of the explosion, the caretakers will take damage too and chain explode soon. Yeah. And now he has basically killed the base. Yeah, that's really. But good. the main problem of the entire game is still not solved. The shield ball and bottom. Yeah. He's trying to stick them, oh, which that's... is quite effective actually because the outlaw was too far in the back. Yeah. And all the units were so bunched up in that place. But under normal conditions, this shield ball could have probably killed Chatria's base. Yeah, possibly. I mean, even now it still stands strong, but for some reason, Israel really wants to use his rogues and move command and send them in. Yeah. I think he like needs to have tried to have several groups of units in on his outer hot on his hotkeys, so we can like switch between uh, setting like fight commands to the rogues and move commands to the thugs. Yeah, I usually take like Fox, Outlaw, and even Felon in the same group and take rogues, for example, in the separate group. Yeah, just because you want to use move command for fuck and outlaw and uh, fight command for the rogues. Yeah. I mean, in some situation, you might want to have like bandits. So you have bandits in one hot cool group, then you yeah. have the thugs in one and outlaws in one hot key group, and then you have the rogues in one hot key group, and you're all using them in conjunction. So in sometimes you want the bandits to, like screen the other units and run forward first. And in, 
some other situation you want to hold back the bandits we even try to keep it inside the shields of the thugs uh, and you want to make sure that the rogues aren't going too far forward and you might keep them on fight so yeah so yeah you can do a lot with micro in that sense uh, with a shield ball I think I think that currently is right is still in a better position than Chatria, even though Chatria has most of the map. Oh really? Yeah, they're pre still pretty. They're actually still pretty even in value. And see how annoying these imps are for uh, like uh, like Isiri. That's really putting like you, he's really getting t getting into the opponent's head. Like he he really gets afraid of advancing against these these lone imps. And he doesn't have any outlaws here, and very few bandits to like screen his units. So yeah, the imps are really working out uh, for Shatra, I'd say. He, he should have definitely built more outlaws, but now that his factory is dead and he switched to amp bots, he can't build them anymore. Yeah, true. Look at these like lone knights are like yes skirmishing these units when the rogues are out of position. Because Isiari isn't really paying attention. If he would be paying attention, he would have his uh, like his uh, rogues constantly on fight, uh, basically. And just keeping his thugs and, all, and uh, other units nearby. Yeah, so somehow through all this, they're still pretty even on total value. It's kind of interesting. Despite uh, Chatria having the better economy. I think the, the, the main problem is right right now has is just that he, he doesn't move forward. Yeah. Even though he has his superior units and has an army advantage. True. And now he's slowly getting uh, destroyed on the sides of Nimbus, which are actually quite decent against shield bots and not a bad choice at all. Yeah, I agree. Like, against rogues and... I mean, the fucks will tank them for quite a lot, but they will deal no damage to them. Yeah. Yeah, the thing with Nimbus is they're basically an artillery unit, but all... Almost all air units have really long range, so they kind of counter that in that sense. You can't. The thing you want to do in most cases with Nimbuses is have them like shoot without taking damage, but most AA has enough range to prevent them from doing that. But Vandals, yeah, they have really short range, uh, so that's why it's kind of harder to like use Vandals against Nimbuses, I'd say. Do you agree with that? I think so, because. Vandals are so cheap, you can spread them out quite a lot to cover a lot of area. And Vandals on fight command and I think Gremlins too are pretty decent at dodging the attacks from Nimbus. Yeah, well in most situations you don't... Well it's rare that you want Nimbuses to be engaging the actual AA. Unless there's only a few. I mean the situations when you like have a standoff and you wanna like... Uh, kill the enemy shield ball or kill the enemy forces then you can use nimbuses in conjunction with your other units your defenses and your mobile army that's more how i would use them i don't really use nimbuses alone this fight in the top left is pretty important right now yeah like i think as long as Israel is pressuring slowly with his rogues and his yeah, the boars he will win, but now they are coming flying ticks. <laughs> that's that's funny. Yeah, flying ticks. That's something you really rarely see. Yeah. But I think he sends his knights too early. Yeah. Why well, so he, if he sends in his ticks now, it will be fine, I think. And there they come. And nice, that's pretty yeah. good. Yes, yeah, it's pretty good. That's what. That's uh, yeah. That's about. Uh, 3,700 units worth of units just getting destroyed yeah, by ticks. Yeah, that was, was a brutal hit. Yeah. Like, 
against fix, uh, against ticks you need outlaw against brown ticks and especially phalanx are really good because yeah. they insta kill them the moment they see them. Yeah, he should he should have like sent in his other tick earlier, but the tick coming out, yeah, still pretty, it's still a good tick. Yeah. yeah. I mean, roaches can do the same, but they delete the normal like that. So, I mean, it's yeah. Yeah. But it's still it's nice to see a tick drop, uh, like tick transports. Yeah. Yeah, and that's gonna allow them to like clean up this army. Oh wait, did a grizzly die? Did I miss that? Yeah, I missed that. He he was overrun by knights. Ah, okay. Like, if the grizzly is. Too close to nice, nice will just perma stun him. Yeah. <laughs> the, the three knights in the top <laughs> left corner is just walking in circles and not yeah. killing the rogue because their shots are blocked by the buoy rack. Yeah. Like, it, it's stuck in there. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, so getting that army, that ball, that uh, army for put Shatria pretty far ahead. Yeah. Do you think boys are a good pick against the knights? I think they are quite decent against knights. Like, they have 100 more range and they can slow them down. But. They have the same problem as the rogues. The moment knights are cloaked, they are going to die. Yeah. But I think it's like the best unit he can use against knights right now. Yeah. Well, they could also like try to spam out the grizzlies and be careful not to lose them. So. Yeah. Um, Grizzlies are probably strong in the long term, but in immediate strength, the Boers will be able to hold the knights back. Yeah, true. Like, what I really dislike about the way Izzerite up is playing this game is that he never really tries to pressure with his skirms. Like, for the entire game. Yeah, true. He always let Shatria come to him. Is, all, is idling five Nimbus in the south. They should definitely be attacking either on the bottom right corner or just try to walk around and annoy the different paths like on the top and in the middle, just where the anti air currently isn't. Yeah. Like, yeah, anglers, the Amphibot AA is, is, is really slow as well. So yeah, I, they are really strong, but they are really slow. Like forty-eight. Yeah. Yeah. So here comes non drop. Um, he's gonna head for like the economy. Pretty good choice, I'd say. Yeah. I mean, Israel can't really do much against the drop right now. Yeah. Like, he, he can't really retreat his units in the front without risking additional territory to be lost, but at the same time his backline is being attacked. Yeah. And Israelite actually decides to retreat his boys. I think at this point Israelite will be losing the top side, the bottom side and his base at the same time. Yeah. Yeah, it's looking pretty bad now. Like, is there anything that Israelite can do at this point? Uh, 
I mean, he does technically have enough boys to attack in the middle and try to hope his. Uh, like, oh no, oh no, he's sending in his boys on move again. Like, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't get it. Like, put your boys on fight against knights. Put your rogues on fight against knights. It's. Yeah. yeah it's an easy win. <laughs> yeah. Like, knights are strong, but as long as they are kited, they can't do much. Yeah. Yeah, like, he could be pushing with his, yeah, some fight, have his boys. Like, the problem with Iserid, most of the time, with his micro, I think, is that he sends in his army in a whole blob, and his, uh, and his, uh, like, his uh, riots go in first, his fast units go in first, like the rice, uh, the, the archers and the bandits go in first, and they die. And then, yeah, then he starts skirmishing with his uh, boys. Like, you can do the opposite. You just put, uh, you can put your archers on guard on the boys, and then you just press, uh, make them fight move, attack move, the boys. Yeah, that's the way. But I usually, yeah, just tend to take them in separate control groups and switch between them. It's yeah. way easier to control them in this way. Yeah, but in this case you have like three different groups of skirmishes that you have to like... Yeah, it, it, look it gets really messy at some point where it's hard to get the right micro and all units at the same time. Yeah. So if you want to relieve yourself with some micro, you just put the archers on like guard on the boys. And then you have just fight move the... attack move the boys. Yeah, either put him on guard or... I don't know, you can probably even just move them together because the boys are, are um, shooting over the uh, archers because of their height. Yeah, just you can control move? At the same time could be working. Yeah, do you either mean control move? move? Yeah, either formation move or I think even just blobbing them could work out. Yeah, but I mean, you want to check out so they don't run, don't run into the knights. You need to have them on fight move, in that sense. Yeah. If you're not going to pay attention to them, like, all the time. That's right. Because, yeah, he has the better units in the in the middle of the map, Isaerid has. But, yeah, he do isn't using them at, at all because he's too afraid of running into the knights or something. And also the ticks, I guess. But now there are no ticks, but he can't know that. I mean, at this point, you definitely have to take the risk, even if you're afraid. Yeah. And with a good spread, uh, like, with a good spread with boys, only a few of them are gonna get stunned. They have quite a lot of health, so. Yeah. That's also a thing with, like, boys. They have enough health to survive, like, not being stunned by ticks that much and not being getting destroyed by uh, roaches. So you, if you spread them out a bit, you won't suffer too much against them. <laughs> and Kshatra is off, he's <laughs> losing all his uh, nimbuses against the lone pressure. <laughs> Israite has now lost all of his boys because he has them on hold position. Yeah. I mean, I can understand that sometimes the units are behaving bad and are running, for example, raiders into roids. But yeah. usually, especially on skirmishers, you want to have it on maneuvers so something like this doesn't happen. Yeah. Because it forces you to always pay attention to the units. Yeah. Yeah, at this point it's just Kshatriya cleaning up all sides with his Nimbus and now overrunning him with Knights. Yeah.
I don't understand why Easy Right is trying to play this game for longer. Okay, there's the GG. Like at this point, there was not really much he could have done. Yeah. I think the game mostly came down to the fact that Chatria was able to get quite a good raiding in the early game and maintaining most of the map while Isiride was unable to pressure with his rogues because he decided not to pressure with his rogues. <laughs> yeah, basically. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the total value, they were pretty even throughout the game. Yeah. It wasn't until... Yeah, it wasn't until that ticks, that tick drop, that uh, Shatria really got ahead. I mean, the main thing uh, which is interesting is that uh, Shatria has way more metal produced and used than Isaride. Yeah. Like, even though Isaride basically had like one third of the map for the for most of the game, he was able to maintain his position because he had the superior units. Yeah, absolutely. But because he didn't take the advantage, Satya was able to, at some point, get in the drop in the base and get those Nimbus raiding on the sides and just pressuring him down with the knights. Yeah. Yeah, pretty interesting game still. <laughs> um, yeah, that's all I have to say. Do you have anything more to say? Really? Hmm? Sorry? Not really. Not really, okay. Well, thank you for watching and thank you for joining me, Manu. I no hope problem. To, I hope to do it again sometime. Yeah, I'll I will join you again if you find a good replay. Okay. Uh, you're welcome to join again. And thank you all for watching and thank you for joining, Mano. See ya. Cheers.